NordVPN have sponsored this vid and will save you lots of dollars and quid. They'll put smiles on all your faces with servers kept in many places. Oh, and since you went and asked, yes, they are all super fast. So you can stream from distant lands with NordVPN at hand. You can use it on your desktop. You can use it on your laptop. You can use it while at home. You can use it while you roam. Don't you worry that I'm a bad rhymer. You can even use it in China. So in the description, click the link or coupon code if that's your thing. And 70% you can save from that three-year plan you surely crave. Huh, there we go. Maybe I should change my career to poetry. Let's talk about F1's increasing use of graphical insights. Currently, they've got something of a bad reputation if you look at the prevailing online discourse, to the point that an AWS insight on screen is met with mockery and distrust. Just what AWS wanted, I'm sure. And the centre point of derision is the frankly terrible tyre performance graphic, which seems far more confusing than helpful and often doesn't seem to match what we're seeing on screen with our own eyeballs. So quite what insight it's giving us remains a bit of a mystery. It was even criticised by Pirelli themselves for being misleading, leading to an apparent improvement of the algorithm and a clarification that the graphic shows not tyre wear, but the output of a whole medley of tyre data to show you the amount of performance capability of the tyre already used during the stint. Which clarifies nothing? Essentially, it's trying to tell you how much lap time the tyre has lost since its peak, but again, sometimes we'll watch cars on red tyres catch and pass a tyre on green tyres, so what are we even doing here? But are all these new Insight graphics bad, and should we dismiss algorithmic data-driven graphics during races altogether? Let's discuss. F1 and motorsport in general need data and graphics to tell the story much more than many other sports. If you look at sports like tennis or baseball or football, you could literally plonk a camera at a wide shot and view the entire field of play and almost get away with showing no graphics at all and you'd still be able to get the gist of what was happening across the entire game. With football there are few TV graphics to keep you in the loop, mainly to show the score, the game time and occasionally player names and events like substitutions and yellow cards. That's all you really need. And following football, or most ball sports, involve focusing on one thing, the ball. This gives you direction of play, which players from which teams are actively involved, and how close we are to a scoring moment. Non-sprint motorsports like F1 are very different. The field of play is miles wide and impossible to see in a single shot. There's no single focal point of action, as there may be battles through the field between different drivers and teams, different strategies that play out through different periods of the race, and car performance that waxes and wanes in different rhythms. To see the whole picture, you need to keep track of many different things, and as such, having information presented to you on screen about what's going on right down the field is important to the audience. Obviously, if you go back a few decades, there were very limited information on screen and it was presented infrequently due to technical limitations and often a lot of the narrative work was done via the commentary team who were fed a lot more information than we could see, either via timing screens or through their fellow journalists in the pit lane. As time moved forward, more and more live information was shown on screen directly to the audience and we need to know how to follow it. Data and graphics can be used well to tell a story or to allow us to follow several points of interest at once. During the final lap of this year's Austrian Grand Prix, we were following Norris's battle to get into a five second window behind Hamilton that would guarantee him a podium due to Lewis's looming penalty. With the TV footage cut away to show the leaders crossing the finish line, the time gap between Hamilton and Norris stayed prominently on screen so we could keep track of the McLaren's epic push to the podium. It was a great use of on-screen data to keep us following the action. On-screen information in F1 has often been raw data, that is, just the facts, a driver's lap time, the gaps between cars in seconds, or the actual positions of the cars on the track. In the last few years, we've been getting more interpreted data, that is, rather than F1 just showing you data and letting you figure it out, it's directly telling you more about what the data means. A very mild example of this started over a decade ago when F1 started colour coding relative lap and sector times in yellow, green and purple. Yellow indicated a time was relatively worse than a benchmark time, green that it was relatively better, and purple that it was fastest of anyone. In the last couple of years, when two cars are in chase, you'll see not just the gap between them, 
but yellow and green chevrons which appear every time the gap is updated to tell you if it's growing or closing. Colour annotations like this let the audience more quickly understand what's happening. You don't have to spend a moment comparing times, you immediately know if the car is faster or slower, and this is very useful. But what we're seeing now is a big step further than that. Let's take the pit strategy battle graphic as an example. This graphic monitors the battle between two cars that are essentially battling for position, but have been separated on track as one of the cars has already taken a pit stop. It looks into the relative pace of both cars, how far apart they are on track, feeds in the expected time it takes to make a stop, and literally tells you whether one car will be ahead or not after the stops. And this is where we fall into my first bone of contention with these insights. Don't take away the fun of watching a sport. What? Never tell me the odds. As an audience, lots of us like keeping an eye on the lap times, watching the gap between the two cars, and knowing roughly the time lost under a pit stop, have a vague idea of how close it will be coming out of the pits. Commentators do this too. They'll say stuff like, I don't think he's doing enough. I think he's going to lose track position at this point. It can be tense and exciting to watch the pit stop battle play out, particularly if on track overtaking is proving difficult. We want to watch it all unfold, with still some doubt in our minds over who will come out on top. Uncertainty and unpredictability is part of the joy of watching sport. Don't tell us what's going to happen, F1. Give us enough information to start making the connections ourselves. The gap, the expected pick time, current pace. I feel I need to repeat this. Do not tell us what's going to happen in a live sport. So this was a rather mild example of interpreted data. Let's have a look at Full Bean's algorithmic data analysis at work then. An F1 car has hundreds of sensors delivering live data back to the pit wall constantly. Across the whole field, that amounts to over a million data points being delivered every second, and AWS has access to much of this data. It goes through a defined process of cleaning the data and running it through several carefully designed algorithms to deliver what it calls insights, or easily digestible interpretations of the data it collects. This in itself is no bad thing. It happens all the time in all fields of industry, business, science, and engineering. We humans can't read the matrix in real time. We need it realised for us, and that's exactly what F1 is trying to do with the absurd amounts of data it has its hands on during sessions. And it's continuing to try and give us access to that information with six new insights rolling out this season. And I don't disagree with this in principle at all. F1's Director of Data Systems, Rod Smedley, wants to use data to illustrate complex scenarios in basic terms. A mission this channel can very much empathise with. Now I don't agree with everything they're doing, but let's start with the good. Car performance scores. I think these are better than I've been given credit for, and the main problem, as with all of these algorithmic insights, is that the method behind them is opaque, so we don't readily know where these numbers are coming from. As such, we see a car being given a score of 8.7, and we go, okay? So, here, F1 divides up the current track into different sections, slow speed corners, medium speed corners, high speed corners, and straights. From here, it monitors each car through each section and works out how it's performing in each type of section relative to the other cars. So, if we say a track has three sections of high speed corners, you can monitor each car's pace in each and give them a ranking and a score relative to a hypothetical best pace. This data is updated every single lap and reinterpreted to give you an up-to-date general idea of how each car is doing in each type of track characteristic relative to its rivals. It's less of a tangible, concrete idea than just raw sector times, but it's easier to display and communicate than if you try to show all of the high-speed corner data on screen. It's meant to be, well, an insight. You're just meant to have an understanding that, say, Albon is fastest through the high-speed corners in general, but suffering more on the straights, or whatever. So personally, I think this is kind of okay as a touching point for understanding the characteristics of a car and driver, and being able to work out where cars are gaining and losing time, or where they might be able to work up to an overtake. Another insight is qualifying and race prediction, which… just… no. I feel I've already said my piece on this, but… Leave the predicting to the fans and the pundits. Don't undercut your product. Unpredictability and suspense is your biggest selling point, and I feel like I'm going mad here. I also want to quickly touch on the driver skills rating and ultimate driver comparison, both of which make me very uncomfortable. The driver skills rating aims to identify the best 
total driver on the grid by grinding lots of performance data into sausages of rank that will score all the drivers against each other in an overall comparison. The ultimate driver comparison aims to compare modern drivers against classic drivers through history to determine the fastest of all time. This is just a personal viewpoint, but in my opinion, F1 has no place taking an official stance on this at all. At all. Fans, pundits, commentators, you know, even the drivers and the teams themselves can all weigh in on the great unanswerable question of one driver versus another. But I think it's really weird and kind of wrong for F1 itself to outright give an official position on which driver is better than another. Like, F1 is just going to publish an official position that Leclerc is better than Verstappen or something. That's bananas. You know, having looked at the data, it is the opinion of Formula 1 that Giovinazzi is the worst driver on the grid. I mean, come on. F1 should remain absolutely neutral on this, and I don't think any data analysis in the world is going to give a satisfying answer. And you're playing with fire, F1. And don't get me started on historical drivers versus modern ones. That's one of the great F1 debates that can never be truly solved. Different eras, cars, rules philosophies, technologies. Is F1 really going to have an official position on Senna versus Schumacher versus Hamilton? Are they mad? This is a dangerous path to tread, and I don't like it at all. Overall, there is a complicated line here that F1 needs to walk carefully. I agree with the mission. They've got a lot of data, and the audience could benefit from getting more information in a complex sport. But if the audience has no idea where this information comes from or what it really means, then they will lose trust in it and continue to mock these so-called insights. And to be honest, well-presented, raw data interpreted by a good commentary team is 90% of what you need to enjoy and follow a race session. This is a much more opinionated piece than usual, so I would love to know your thoughts. Now, I don't think AWS insights are all bad, but definitely need some honing. And I'd love to hear positive ideas for what they could do with all this data for the benefit of fans old and new. Let me know. <laughs>